Hi folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new video. Today I'm looking to add metadata and uh, watermark information to a number of images in a batch exercise. To do that, I'm going to use a piece of software called Fast Stone Image Viewer, which you can see is available here. I will also put a link to this in the video description. Um, Fast Stone Image Viewer, it's, well, it's an image viewer. You can manage a library of images with it. You can do a few touch-ups um, and changes with it as well. Um, but specifically, we're going to look at using um, the watermark feature, adding some, in essence, some capture text and pulling data from the image metadata. The sort of metadata I'm talking about, so I've got four images here as an example. And if I open this one up and take a look at the image properties, you can see that within the properties of this image, we have the date the photo was taken, um, lots of other information like the device it was taken on, the camera settings at the time, and things like the GPS coordinates are available also. Now what I want to do is, I've got four images here, and in each of those images, I would like to pull some of the data from the image itself and put it onto these images um, directly as an overlay, almost like a watermark or a caption. Um, now, I've got four images here. It's not a big exercise, but it could easily be 100 images or, or more, you know, and it's pretty quick and easy to do it with this software. So, we'll open up Fast Stone Image Viewer. And then, not going to mess around with the libraries and stuff just now. You can see through the menu bars, like colours, you can adjust the colours, the levels. I think there's an automatic adjust as well. Um, you can go to effects and add borders, do some blurring out of stuff as well. So it looks like a pretty good application. But for my purposes, what I'm looking to do is just add that watermark to the pictures. Now to do that, we go to Tools, Open Batch Convert Rename Dialog. And then before we get into any of this option here, we're just going to jump into Advanced Options on the right hand side here. Now in here is where we select the options that we want to apply to the photo itself. Um, and you can customize this quite a bit. So you could, in essence, in this box here, just take everything out. Now you could put in your name. So you could put in photo taken by Chris Bryson on, and then we can insert a variable. So we can go to insert variable, um, and then pick some information from the image metadata. And then what the software will do is it'll look at the metadata of the images and insert the relevant information from each picture. So in this case, I'm going to go to date and time and I'm just going to pick, um, I won't go for date and time. I just want to pick, well, I'd want to go for the day, the month and the year. So we'll pick day, I'll put a dash in, date time, we'll go for month. I'll put a dash in again and uh, insert the, the year. Now, that maybe doesn't make sense just now. If you get more familiar with this application, you might start to memorize some of these variables um, as well. Um, but in essence, what that should do is display something like photo taken by Chris Bryson on, and it'll put the, the date in there. Now, you can make it say anything. You could put in um, copyright. If you have a brand, you could put the brand name in there. And you can put other variables as well. So you could put in information such as the make and model. And I think for these images that were taken on my phone. So that might say um, like Apple iPhone um, or something to that. Um, something to that effect. Uh, so I'm just going to keep it very basic with that just now. But you can see there is some other information that you could put in here if you'd like to do so. Um, you can just insert the variables wherever they apply. Um, now, if we take a look at the options we have here, this text looks very big, um, but the, the text gets pasted on the full size of the picture. So these particular pictures are quite big. Um, I think the resolution of these were, if I go to details, we can see, so oh yeah, 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. So that's, that's quite a high resolution images. Um, now, when you put the text on, the text seems quite big. You can see there that it's size 48. That seems quite big, but when it gets put onto an image of that size, and then the image gets scaled on your screen, that's not going to look too bad. I'll show you what I mean. Now, we can click on the font dialog box here. Uh, we can change the font. This is a nice one that I downloaded online. 
uh, format it, you know, the, the kind of font size, uh, the styling, and you can change the color as well if you'd like to do so on that one. Back in this dialog here, you can take the background off or on, and then you can add a shadow to the text too. I think the shadow helps it stand out a little bit. I've made it very clear by putting a black background on there. Um, pick the position of the photo where the things to go, so you can put it top left, um, put it right in the centre of the image if you'd like to do so. But for this example, I'll just put mine at the bottom and the centre of the, the photo. And then you can use these controls here to offset that a little bit as well if you want to just kind of move it out slightly. There is an opacity functionality here, um, and this is the only place that I found a bit of limitations. So let, let's say, for example, we don't want it taken up or we want to make it slightly see-through. You can reduce the capacity a bit, so we could put in, for example, 50%, and you can see there that it, you know, it's not going to stand out too much in the image, but it still adds a bit of a watermark information. Um, my personal preference would be, you know, it'd be quite nice if it allowed you to put an opacity on the background. It'd be nice to have the, the kind of the, the see-through black there, but have the actual text itself display quite clearly. Um, so I don't know, I'll go for something in the middle, I'll go for 75 uh, in this case. There we go, so it's not too obvious. Obviously using it without a background I think looks more, and, and with the orange text, it looks more closer to what some digital camera date stamps would have looked like as well, if, if that's your thing. Um, so I'll put that on there. Now if you set up some watermark metadata sort of stamps that you like here, you can save those options to a file so that if you had different variables um, that you use for maybe personal photos, for brand photos, whatever it may be, you can save those uh, configurations, no problem. For now I'm just going to say OK. So I'm just going with, um, was it photo taken by Chris Bryson on, and it should take the, the day, the month, and the year. Um, I'll put a full stop at the end of that there as well. Uh, so I'm just going to say OK for that just now. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is browse to the folder where the images are stored. Now, I've created two folders on my desktop. Photos Original, which have the four images in it, and then Photos Processed, which is an empty folder. Now I'm going to go to Photo Original. I'm going to select the four images and click Add. And that's now saying that for this batch exercise, we want to perform the exercise on these four images. The output folder we can specify here and you can click browse. Now mine is already to the processed folder so I don't need to change that but you can pick the folder you want the exported images to go into and you can select a specific format and modify the image settings as well there in terms of quality. There are some preview options down the bottom here where you can look at the output, you can rename the files um, and there are some advanced options that you can apply to. For this case, all I want to do is take that simple timestamp I created, um, date stamp rather, and put that onto the images. So I've moved that over there. I'm going to click on convert. And this takes almost no time at all. Uh, so you can see there that it's modified the images. It's given us what the existing size was and what the new size is. Um, and just confirmed that it's okay for them all. Two seconds it took. So if I just click on done there just now, I'll just minimize this box here. Now we get into the processed folder and open an image, and you can see the, the output of that. So like I said before, I went for that quite large font size, but because we're looking at the image, now if you look at the top of the screen here, this is a 4000 by 3000 resolution picture. On an HD screen, it scaled it down to just under 30% of the screen real estate, so the actual size looks okay there. If we view this at say 100%, this is where you would see the text at that full 48 points uh, that it is. Yeah, for what we have just now, um, that's absolutely fine. Um, and likewise, it's went through each of the pictures. Now, for these pictures, they're all taken on the same day. So the, the actual date in each one's the same. Um, but yeah, let's put it in there. And I think that looks quite neat. That message could say anything you want. So yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. I don't have much more to say on the situation than that. It saved me a lot of time today, and hopefully it'll save you some time too. It's a great free application. It'll take you less than five minutes to get it set up and doing whatever it is you need to do. If you have any questions, please comment below. And thanks for watching.